If you, the viewer, were trapped in a snowy universe after the end of a zombie apocalypse, would you know how to survive? And it's not just surviving the winter, but the monsters that hide within. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the 2015 film Extinction and trying to help the characters fix their mistakes and ultimately beat the Frost Reapers from Extinction. Our movie starts off showing us an envoy of two school buses and their military escorts. Inside, we can see people from all walks of life and they all appear to be civilians and they're definitely refugees from the zombie apocalypse that's currently going on. On this bus, there's four notable characters, Jack and Patrick who are friends, and there's a girl named Emma who is Jack's wife. They also have a little kid named Lou. Right before the two buses reach the safe zone, the bus in the front suddenly takes the brakes and stops. Everyone in the second bus is obviously very confused, and since they were already stressed out, tensions are high. Tensions only increase after there's machine gun fire in the bus in front of them. You'd think people would pick up that because of the machine gun fire, there's definitely a zombie in the first car. However, the military official here is too fucking stupid to realize that, and he gets out of the bus to go look at the other bus. In my personal opinion, if someone is opening fire into a group of civilians, there is something a lot worse than harming civilians in the bus, meaning there's definitely a zombie there. What this soldier should have done is instructed the second bus to go around the first bus and then make it to the safe zone, leaving everyone in the first bus behind. And for good measure, you could use the military Humvee and spray the first bus full of bullets to make sure the zombie doesn't get out. However, the soldier obviously doesn't do this. Not only does he go outside, he goes outside holding a signal flare, basically advertising to all the zombies that their next meal is right here. And after he goes near the bus, he suddenly disappears and the other soldiers cannot get in contact with him. They look outside and they see that the signal flare is now on the floor, meaning that Captain, for some unknown reason, might have dropped the signal flare. It might be that he was getting eaten or that he just went and go get a burger and took a break. So a second soldier decides he wants to open the door and get off the bus to go look for the Captain. Obviously, the captain made one mistake and this soldier is going to make another one by following him. This is obviously a mistake, the soldier should have stayed on the bus and told the bus driver to reroute it to go to the safe zone rather than go outside and look for a dead person. Once the soldier steps outside, he's attacked by a zombie, causing him to accidentally pull the trigger of his gun and kill the bus driver. And zombies start flooding into the bus. Luckily for everyone inside the bus, a character named Jack is able to push the zombies back out the exit and close the door, meaning they're temporarily safe. The group then devise a plan to go outside and pick up guns from the dead soldiers. But this doesn't make any sense. Why risk going outside during a fucking zombie apocalypse when the keys to the bus are literally still in and the driver is dead? Just throw his body onto the fucking floor and drive away. Instead, what the characters do is they do go outside to try to grab the guns, which they are successful in getting. However, the soldier they're getting the gun off of reanimates, and at the same time, a zombie horde approaches and starts attacking the bus. Towards the end of the attack, Emma, who is Jack's wife, is able to save the baby, However, she ends up getting bitten as a result, and Jack has no choice but to put a bullet into her head before she can turn into a zombie. What they didn't think of is they could have found a pocket knife or any sort of sharp instrument and simply sawed her hand off. That way, the infection would not spread to her body, maybe giving her a chance to live. And if she turns anyways, then you can just shoot her there. Our movie then cuts to a distant future where we see a man with a sniper rifle take aim and shoot a horse. Then he walks through the snow-covered landscape and picks up his kill. And it turns out that this bearded man is Jack. We can see to adapt to his new environment, Jack now uses a snowmobile to travel around the snowy area. Since this is in the future, we can see the little baby that Emma managed to save named Lou is now much older, and she's living with Patrick despite being Jack's kid. This is because after Emma died, Jack got all depressed and became a severe alcoholic. And we can see that Jack and Patrick don't get along very well since they don't talk, they live in separate houses, and they're separated by a large fence. Patrick and Lou are spending their days learning photosynthesis. Instead, they should be learning how to forage or grow their own food. Education is really fucking useless if the entire society collapsed. The movie then introduces us to the food situation of both families. Patrick and Lou are definitely running out of food because they can only eat preserved food since Patrick is a useless fuck that doesn't know how to hunt. Meanwhile, Jack is grilling some delicious horse steak because he can hunt and knows how to gather food himself. In this new climate, it's basically impossible to grow food, so hunting for birds or other sort of wildlife is your only way of gaining a sustainable food source. So Patrick should have been asking Jack for help this entire time on how to hunt. It turns out that during this time period, Jack has also adopted a dog. Although a dog will consume extra food and might attract some unwanted attention, I do think having a dog is a good thing. We all know during COVID-19, isolation makes you fucking depressed, so having a dog will certainly help out Jack, who's staying alone at all times. We also learn that Jack has been broadcasting on the radio to find other survivors and give them information. I do not think this is a good idea, because number one, running the electricity will use up gasoline from the generator, and you might accidentally find some bad people who are looking to harm you. 
The next morning, Patrick wakes up and finds that Lou isn't next to him anymore, so he runs downstairs in a panic. It turns out she's just making cereal with water. <laughs> Holy shit, that's kind of depressing. Patrick and Lou do a lot of random shit throughout the day, everything from trying to memorize the timetables to target practicing with firearms. However, that night, Lou looks out the window and she sees a very weird zombie-like creature digging in the ground. The next morning, Lou is once again gone from Patrick's bedside for the second time in a row. However, this time she's not getting watered down cereal. She's later found hiding under her bed because she was scared of the monster she saw last night. The dad shrugs it off as just random nightmares and says the monsters don't exist anymore since they all died from the cold. This is a very idiotic thing to say because you haven't ventured out of your house or the nearby area in the past months, meaning you have no idea what's going on in the outside world. So it's very possible that a monster could have made it back. He should have investigated his daughter's claims more seriously. If you look around the house, you can see there's a lot of vulnerabilities. Mainly the windows are not boarded up and there's not even blinds on them. Even if it's not a zombie trying to break in, you're still gonna wanna board those up in case marauders or bandits try to break in. Later, Lou once again goes outside to visit the dog. However, this time Patrick follows and sees she's fucking around with dog and talking to Jack. So he gets really pissed off at the dog and aims a gun at it. And an intense conversation ensues, however, nothing extreme happens. Jack then takes his snowmobile to the nearby city where he visits a supermarket that's actually extremely well stocked. He grabs some food and water for himself and he grabs a stuffed animal for Lou. It seems he wants to reconnect with her because he feels guilty that he's been absent her entire life. But before he can think very deeply about it, his dog notices the fox that was inside Inside the mall with them suddenly got killed by something. Suddenly, a giant frost zombie jumps up above them and starts chasing Jack and the dog, so they have to run away as fast as they can. And when it comes to running away, here's one tip. Don't look behind you because it could throw off your balance and slow you down. And in this case, if you slow down, you're probably going to get caught and eaten. Good thing Jack and his dog are not caught and they're able to close a door that traps the monster inside the supermarket. Jack and the dog are able to get on the snowmobile and ride back to the house, however they're still being pursued by the monster. My only question is how fast is this fucking zombie? Because I did some research and most snowmobiles can go upwards of 100 miles per hour at least, meaning that this thing must be running fast as fuck to be catching up. And if it is running that fast, why didn't it just catch up to Jack inside the supermarket? Jack turns around to look where the monster is, but because of that, he runs over a log, which causes his snowmobile to flip over. And when he comes to, the zombie is hovering right above his face. The only reason that Jack is not dead is because these zombies adapted to lose their eyesight and hunt with enhanced hearing because of the snow on the ground. I don't know about you, this sounds a little bit like another movie that I've watched. But this movie actually came out first. Of course, Jack doesn't actually know this information, but if you did figure out that he wasn't going to kill you unless you made some noise, I would just lay still until he left. He would leave eventually. But Jack knows he can't just lay still because Patrick and Lou are practicing shooting their firearms, which would definitely attract the zombie there. Jack is almost killed by the monster, but then his dog comes in at the last second, distracting it long enough for Jack to grab a shotgun and shoot it. Unfortunately, because of the dog's heroic sacrifice, the dog is killed. Jack, full of the feelings of revenge, decides he wants to go hunt the creatures because they killed his wife and now his dog. So when Patrick walks out late at night, he's shocked to see one of the creature things chained up in the middle of his backyard. This is because Jack caught it and brought it back. But rather than killing it, he decided to chain it up. I think this is a very bad idea because it's obvious that these creatures hunt through sound and if you have one of them screaming in the middle of your fucking backyard, it's obvious that it's going to attract other creatures. Plus, what are you going to do with it? You don't have resources to study it or anything. Lou steps outside of the house, and because all three of them are in the same place, Jack is invited to a family dinner, so for the first time, he takes a bath and shaves. Jack shows up at the house with a fresh set of his horse steaks, which is much better than the canned beans that Patrick and Lou have been eating. The three all sit down and have dinner together, and they all seem to be having a really rad time. The group decides that their best option is to head somewhere else, so they fix up an old truck and finally get it running. Jack broadcasts this on the radio, asking if anyone wants to join them. Personally, I would not ask for anyone to join them, because that's just an invitation for someone to come and steal your truck. Luckily for the group, no bandits or evil people heard the broadcast, only a pregnant lady that came to join them. However, I personally would not take the pregnant lady into the group. Not only is childbirth probably gonna fucking kill her, it's just extra mouths to feed, and she can't even work because she's pregnant. Rather than continuing on via the truck, they realize the woman's pregnant, so they hunker down for a little bit back at the two houses. The woman reveals that there's a horde of infected on their way there, and they already took out her group, which is why she was alone. Then, the woman hears the screaming of the captured creature outside, so she goes and executes it with a gun. 
This was a seemingly good idea because the woman knows that that creature will attract other creatures with the screeches, but what she doesn't realize is she could have just used a knife and did it quietly. The gunshot will now attract more creatures to the area. They hear howling in the distance and they know there's other creatures coming to their location. So everyone grabs their firearms and just starts walking around. I don't understand why they have to walk around and why they can't just sit on the couch and stay quiet, because if they just didn't make any noise, the creature would ignore them and keep walking. Cause remember, these creatures are completely blind. Another mistake that this group makes is not fortifying ahead of time. In fact, they don't start putting furniture against windows and doors until the creatures start actively attacking. They should have done all this barricading way ahead of time. Of course, with this lack of preparation, the group quickly gets overwhelmed as a bunch of the ghouls get inside really quickly. However, these ghouls aren't actually great at fighting, mainly because they can't fucking see. I guess the pregnant lady is at least somewhat useful because she's smart enough to at least turn on the radio and play loud music so all the ghouls get randomly scattered and can't think properly because of the loud noises. Because these ghouls can now no longer hear, the three adults start having a heyday, killing them in all sorts of ways, everything from a nail gun to stabbing with a piece of glass. However, the electricity runs out on the record player and the group realize they might be fucked. That is until Jack offers to sacrifice himself by running outside with the signal flare and shooting and yelling with his shotgun. While Patrick, the pregnant lady and Lou would have gotten in the truck and driven away to safety. So what are the ways Jack could have made it out without him having to sacrifice himself? The first method is when the zombies are listening to the TikToker's shit music and unable to move because it's too cringe, the group should have ran away into the truck and left. When they stopped to kill the creatures, it wasted all their time they had to escape. The second solution is they should have left their house earlier. When the creatures were coming, they still had plenty of time to get in the truck and leave, rather than spend time talking about past life and doing absolutely nothing. However, since they don't do this, Jack uses a signal flare to blow up the local gasoline tank, taking all the creatures with him as the other three survivors drive away in their truck. And at the very end of the movie, we're left with the three survivors staring into a blissful sunrise. And that's it. That's how you can beat the Frost Reapers from the movie Extinction. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button, as well as leave a comment on what movie you want to be done next. And as usual, thank you all for the amazing support. We've been growing a lot recently, so I want to keep up the growth. Thank you, everybody, and have a great rest of your day.